understand that one of the signs of the covenant that God had with Israel in the Old Testament was the Sabbath day. Now I grew up in the Baptist church and a very traditional Baptist church at that and I grew up going to Sunday school and vacation Bible school and when I went to vacation Bible school and Sunday school they taught me about the Sabbath day. And there was a great debate going on at that time as to what day was the real day to worship God. That debate continues to this day and has existed all the way back uh, to the Old Testament, Old Testament theology as to what is the right day uh, to worship God. In spite of the fact that the New Testament tells us not to give respect of days, we're still debating over what day we ought to worship. I had run into some good friends uh, as a young man as a seven, that were seven day Adventists and I still have a lot of friends who worship the Lord uh, on Saturday, which technically is the Sabbath day. And there was a great deal of debate going on with them as to uh, what was the right day to worship God. I have absolutely no problem with anybody who chooses to go to church on Saturday. Uh, I have no problem with that. I would never debate that. I would never argue about it. I can pass by the Seventh-day Adventist Church and wave and respect and appreciate their right to worship uh, on Saturday, uh, probably because I also uh, worship on Saturday. Yeah, I do. I hope that does not exempt me from an opportunity to serve as your pastor, but I, I worship on Saturday. I always, ever since I've been saved, I've worshiped uh, on Saturday and, uh, and Friday. And, and, and Thursday. And generally on Wednesday too, and, 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 and Tuesday uh, and, and Monday uh, as well, and, and, and Sunday. Sunday also, I worship on Sunday. I don't have to come to a building to be in worship. I'm, I worship the Lord wherever I am and wherever I go. But there's a great deal of uh, debate about it. And I, I can remember that uh, my Sunday school teacher took me to the New Testament and showed me a scripture in the book of Acts that it said on the first day of the week uh, they came together in the book of Acts. And she did that to make me understand that she said that the New Testament Sabbath was Sunday and that it was the New Testament Sabbath because it was a new beginning and that Christ rose from the dead on the third day and from the New Testament forward uh, we should worship on Sunday and while I respect that reasoning and that philosophy I well church what are we gonna do about that Amen. <laughs> for the past few weeks we've looked at several uh, prominent preachers. We looked at John MacArthur debating that nine commandments are binding but not one. We already answered that when James tells us that if you break one, you break them all. We looked at uh, Dr. Charles Stanley at the Sabbath in the New Testament as well. And we went over the text in Colossians And today we're going to review here uh, Bishop Jakes, Dr. T.D. Jakes, on his view of the Sabbath. So let's begin with a word of prayer. And let's bow our heads. Father in heaven, Lord, I thank you for your holy day. And we open your word, I ask that you open our minds. And Lord, right now, in a special way, I ask that you be with Mr. Augur. Bring his health and recover him back. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. The burden that God has placed on your pastor is to deal with this issue of the Sabbath. And we've been talking about the, the Sabbath already for three weeks. If you're visiting here, it's not that we chose it because you are here, but you happen to be here at the right time. Amen. Where we're continuing discussing of the topic of the Sabbath. And we've seen 
how the Sabbath was even before Exodus 20, before Mount Sinai, and how in the New Testament, and we even went over Bible principles in studying the Bible. Do you remember those principles? Number one, well, one of them was that the Holy Spirit does not contradict himself. If there are 50 Bible texts that say that the Sabbath is Saturday, and maybe two may give a hint there has to be something wrong with our study because the Holy Spirit isn't going to contradict himself and neither is a biblical author and we looked at that as well if, if Paul preached and worshipped both with Jews and Greeks on the Sabbath day on Saturday he wouldn't later on in the next chapter say I'm doing away with the Sabbath it, it, we have to look at, at the context of the, of the text, of the author, and of the entire Bible as well. And the entire Bible as well. And as, as, as I mentioned, I wouldn't have such an issue if God doesn't have such an issue. He says, remember, he doesn't say remember the Sabbath idea, or remember the Sabbath rest, or remember the Sabbath su suggestion, remember the Sabbath D-A-Y day. Remember the Sabbath day. Day. God tells us to remember the Sabbath day. So Dr. Jakes and Dr. Stanley and John MacArthur and anyone else who may be going to church on the first day of the week, they have a, a problem. You see, the Sabbath isn't something that we came up with as a Seventh-day Adventist church. Absolutely not. We didn't come up with it at all. The Sabbath is something that we've seen through history. And I'm going to just review, review of last week. Review of last week. And we, we, we looked at last week on here on some of the, the quotes from other denominations other than Seventh-day Adventists. Okay, here the Roman Catholic Church says, but you may read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation and you will find not, find not a single line authorizing the sanctification of Sunday. The scriptures enforce the religious observance of Saturday, a day which we never sanctify. So in case you missed, hear this cardinal, Cardinal James Gibbon says, I read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation and what is his, what is his conclusion? You won't find Sunday observance. Okay, so that's from our, our Roman Catholic Church, our Anglican Church, as well says there is no word, no hint in the New Testament about abstaining from work on Sunday. Into the rest of Sunday, no divine law enters. The observance of Ash Wednesday or Lent stands exactly on the same footing as the observance of Sunday. And notice they specifically said here, New Testament. Okay, so the Baptists, there was and is a command to keep holy the Sabbath day, but that Sabbath day was not Sunday. It, was, it will be said, however, and with some show of triumph, that the Sabbath was transferred from the seventh to the first day of the week. Where can, we, where can the record of such a transaction be found? Not in the New Testament. Absolutely not. Okay? These aren't words from Seventh-day Adventist theologians. I know what Seventh-day Adventist theologians already say. But these are other theologians. And the Lutheran Church here as well says, but they err in teaching that Sunday has taken the place of the Old Testament Sabbath and therefore must be kept as the seventh day had to be kept by the children of Israel. These churches err in their teachings for scripture has in no way ordained the first day of the week in place of the sabbath there is simply no law in the new testament to that effect to that effect and this is the last one that oh no presbyterians the sabbath is a part of the decalogue the ten commandments this alone forever settles the question as to the perpetuity of the institution until therefore it can be shown that the whole moral law has been repealed the sabbath will stand you see here what the presbyterians are saying it's all or nothing you can't pick and choose from a commandment 
You can't pick and choose. The teachings of Christ confirms the perpetuity of the Sabbath. And if you like a copy of these quotes, and last Sabbath, I looked at two other ones as well. There is a copy in the back on the deacon's desk if you would like a copy to take home and study it and even investigate the quote and, and look it up for yourself. This, you see, this problem is with history. You can find that the Sabbath has been kept and that the Sabbath is Saturday through history. There is no question or no learned theologian on debating which day the Sabbath is. So today is not debating whether it's Saturday or Sunday. No. But today, God tells us, and I appreciate the scripture reading, reminds us, remember the Sabbath day to keep it, what? Holy. Holy. You see, that's where Dr. Jakes got confused. He thought that the commandment said, remember the Sabbath day to worship. That's not what the commandment says. I agree with him. I worship on Sunday, on Monday, on Tuesday, on Wednesday, on Thursday, on Friday, every day. But God tells us to keep the Sabbath day holy. To keep the Sabbath day holy. And even though there may be other Sunday keepers that call Sunday the Sabbath, they don't keep the Sabbath holy. You see, to keep the Sabbath day holy, you, you don't work, you don't shop, you don't do your own will, your own pleasure. It's a day set apart. And thank God that He is practical. Imagine if we were to keep every day holy, we would literally starve. You, you can't work, okay? You can't buy or sell. We're, we're going to see. You can't cook. We will literally starve. But God is practical. God, God says six days you can work, you can shop, you can eat. But the seventh day is a day of rest. It's a day of rest. God is, God is very, very practical. Just, just how he is with our money. How much does God own? Everything. Everything. But he says, I'm only asking for 10%. He could ask for 50% if he wanted to. But God is practical and tells us to work all the other six days. But the seventh day is holy. Sabbath is a day of rest, not merely a day of worship. Not merely a day of worship, but a day of rest. And what I like to begin in sharing with you is that God gives it God gives it to you and to keep it how he gave it to you you see the Sabbath isn't so, isn't holy because we're keeping it the Sabbath is holy because he already made it holy it's there back in creation it's it's already holy whether you work whether you don't work whether you shop it's already holy we may break the Sabbath and stain it but it still remains a holy day it still remains a holy day. So God is just saying, I give it to you holy, and when you take my Sabbath, you keep it holy. You keep it the way I gave it to you. Amen. I gave it to you holy, so don't bring it back to me unholy. Keep it holy. If I ever, if I ever lend my car, which is rare, <laughs> And I give somebody the keys. I don't have them, but I give somebody the keys. I give it, I'm lending it to you with a full tank. Return it to me with a full tank, please. <laughs> God says, God says, I give it to you holy, so you keep it holy. Keep it the way I give it to you. Turn your Bible to Exodus 34. We're going to see what inspired inspired these people to keep it holy. Exodus 34. And I'm, I, I can't wait till next Sabbath. Next Sabbath we have communion service. I invite everyone to come to communion service. Everyone. Unfortunately, that's the time when people skip church for whatever reason. And I can tell you it's the work of the devil to skip church and communion service. Oh, that's the day that we should mostly go to church. And we're going to see 
We're going to see on those that refuse to keep the Sabbath day holy. What, 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 what God has to say. But Exodus 34, 21. Exodus 34, verse 21. Here the Bible says, Six days you shall work, but on the seventh day you shall rest. In plowing times and in harvest you shall rest. See, God is plain and simple. Plain and simple. So the, the question is, are you doing that? Are you resting? Is your mind also resting? Because we can, we can get caught up so much with, with stress, with problems, that our minds don't even rest. And that's why the devil really works hard on Friday. You know, Friday is called the what? Preparation. Preparation day. Preparing for what? For the Sabbath. Somehow it's turning into a procrastination day. <laughs> but it's a preparation day to prepare for the Sabbath. And the devil knows that. And he knows that, that if he can get your Friday night messed up, he's got your Sabbath messed up. And so he may have your boss call you and tell you, he need, tell you that you need to stay in a little bit later on Friday he may work it out so there's more traffic and you're trying to get home on Sabbath evening and there's more traffic somehow on Friday evening in the freeway or even if you're in line in Walmart the devil will put that person you're you're in a hurry to get out on Friday and don't say you're not because I've been there and I've seen some of you with me trying to get out early on Friday for Sabbath. And the devil may place that some one person in front of, the, of you in the checkout line who takes out their notebook with coupons <laughs> and begins to, to, to match every single thing, even the piece of gum. And you're trying to get out and the devil wants to mess up your Sabbath day. He would do anything. You know, sometimes I wonder, sometimes even children, is, it seems like they lose their mental capacity on Sabbath. You know, you tell them to behave, sit down, eat your food, and it, it's, it's, they're not somehow thinking. The devil will do anything so you will not have rest on Sabbath. You may be resting from your job, but God wants us to give us a mind of rest as well. A mind of rest. You know, it, it's a day that, why even bother checking the mail? All we're going to see is bills that we can't pay. You know, God wants us to, to, to rest, to rest. Exodus 35, if you, if, you, if you turn with me there. Exodus chapter 35, verse 1. And in that resting, we're going to see how he made sure that we would rest. Exodus 35, 1. It says, Then Moses gathered all the congregation of the children of Israel together and said to them, These are the words which the Lord has commanded you to do. Work shall be done for six days. But the seventh day shall be a holy day for you. A Sabbath of rest to the Lord. Whoever does any work on it shall be put to death. That's strong language. You shall kindle no fire throughout your habitations on the Sabbath day. And just turn with me there in Exodus 16, 23. Kindling a fire. What does that mean? Exodus 16, 23. God takes even into consideration our ladies. Exodus 16, 23. Then he said to them, This is what the Lord has said. Tomorrow is a Sabbath rest. Notice how rest keeps coming after the word Sabbath. A holy Sabbath to the Lord. Bake what you will bake today and boil what you will boil. And lay up for yourselves all that remains to be kept until morning. We're going to see the context of this in a little while. But here God is talking about cooking. And he wants even the ladies to be free from cooking. Amen. Amen. And, pre -pre and preparation. If, if today afternoon I, I go to my wife and I say, you know, I feel like eating some of those nice tacos you make. She says, I'm free from cooking today. 
How about making one of those tres leches cake? I, you can ask me tomorrow, but today I'm free from cooking today. God wants, God wants, doesn't want us to be tied up with there in the kitchen with the heat and the pot and the pans and recipes and oh I need something go to the dollar store and bring me this recipe God wants us to rest to rest that's why again Friday is preparation day we prepare we prepare and we're gonna see here when God rained the manna he rained double on Friday so on Sabbath they didn't even have to worry about picking it up they didn't have to worry about picking it up and sometimes, you know, with all these big meals that we normally eat on Friday, I mean on Sabbath, that's why we participate in late activities. Because <laughs> the stomach is trying to digest all that macaroni and cheese and, and desserts and pastas and cakes. But God is looking more than a physical rest, friends. God wants us to be free, free from worrying, free from our bills, free from stress. Don't even... Turn on your computer, watch the TV, or even read the newspaper. What, the same thing that you will find on the news will still be there Sunday. There will still be robberies, there will still be deaths, there will still be accidents. God wants us to have a day of rest. Not just physically, but from your mind. Do not stress about the things. Isaiah 56. Isaiah 56 tells us. 56 verse 2. Blessed is a man who does this, does what? And the son of man who lays hold on it, who keeps from defiling the Sabbath and keeps his hand from doing evil. Notice Isaiah here refined, refers to defiling the Sabbath as something evil. And that's why he says, blessed is a man who does this. Blessed are you who keep from defiling the Sabbath. Isaiah 58, just turn a couple of chapters there. 58 verse 13. Notice the blessing that God has for you. If you turn away your foot from the Sabbath, from doing your own pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy day of the Lord honorable, and shall honor Him, not doing your own ways, not finding your own pleasures, not speaking your own words. In other words, it's not about you. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's about who? It's about God. Okay, if you do that, verse 14, then you shall delight yourself in the Lord. And I will cause you to ride on the high hills of the earth and feed you with the heritage of Jacob, your father, the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Don't let anyone mess with your Sabbath. Don't let the devil interfere with the Sabbath. You see, the Sabbath is so important to God that even in, ne in Nehemiah, if you turn there, Nehemiah chapter 13. Nehemiah 13. It's right before Esther. Nehemiah 13 verse 15. The Bible says, in those days I saw in Judah some people treading wine press on the Sabbath and bringing in sheaves and loading in donkeys with wine, grapes, figs, and all kinds of burdens which they brought into Jerusalem on the Sabbath day. And I warned them, this is Nehemiah, and I warned them about the day on which they were selling provisions. Verse 17, no, 16, I'm sorry. Men of Tyre dwelt there also who brought in fish and all kinds of goods and sold them on the Sabbath to the children of Judah and in Jerusalem. So obviously here, Jerusalem, the children of Israel, were buying on the Sabbath. Then I, then I contended with the nobles of Judah and said to them, What evil thing is this that you do? by which you profane the Sabbath day. Do you, did not your fathers do thus? And did not our God bring all the disasters on us and on this city? Yet you bring added wrath on Israel by profaning the Sabbath. Friends, when God, when you know better, God expects better. So 19 verse says, So it was at the gate of Jerusalem 
as it began to break before the Sabbath, that I commanded the gate to be shut and charged that they must not be opened till after the Sabbath. Then I posted some of my servants at the gate so that no burdens would be brought on the Sabbath day. See there what Nehemiah does? Are you following? What does he do? He closes the gate. If you're not going to listen to me, I'm going to close the gate and nobody will be able to buy here. At least on the Sabbath day. <laughs> he was very convicted. As long as I'm here, he said, we're not going to buy or so we're not going to break the Sabbath. But notice verse uh, 20. Now the merchants and sellers of all kinds wares lodged outside Jerusalem once or twice. They're still there. Even though the gate is closed, they're outside yelling through the walls. There's two. There's, there's, there's a sale. Buy one, get two free. After sundown, come back over here. <laughs> don't, miss the, don't miss the opportunity. And verse 21 says, So I warned them. Okay, the ones outside the gate. He <laughs> says, So I warned them and said to them, Why do you spend the night around the walls? If you do so again, I will lay hands on you. From that time on, they came no more on the Sabbath. Came no more on the Sabbath. Don't carry any burdens, God says. Don't shop or sell on the Sabbath. And friends, God is unpleased with the looseness that His church deals with the Sabbath. Amen. God is unpleased with the looseness and lack that Seventh-day Adventists, I'll be more clear, treat the Sabbath. This foolishness of coming to church and then afterwards in the evening going to a ball game, going to a wedding party. Friends, God wants us to have rest on that day. To have rest on that day. It's a Sabbath rest. And I'm not just talking about laying down and sleeping. I'm talking about things that wear you out. God wants us not to worry about it. Not to worry about it. And that's why the devil knows importance and will begin working since Friday. It's not a coincidence that, that you know, the, the college games or the professional games or even the high school football games are on Friday night. It's not a coincidence. The devil knows that that's when the Lord's Day begins. I remember my high school graduation was Saturday evening. Saturday evening. And I could have justified and said, well, by the time we're in the middle of the ceremony, it'll be already sundown. But thank, thanks to my parents who taught me, remember the Sabbath day, day, day to keep it holy. Not, not the Sabbath two hours in the morning of the, of the church, but the whole day. And you see, keeping the Sabbath is sometimes even a sacrifice. Keeping the Sabbath may be sometimes a sacrifice. Do we love God more or do we love ourselves or others more? Do we love God more or do we love our families more? God is looking for a full commitment. For a full commitment. And these things that the devil distracts us with that happen on Friday evening or on Sabbath maybe, they're all distractions that are really going to get burned up when Jesus, when Jesus comes. Everything's going to get burned up. The only thing that will not is you and your relationship with Jesus. And that relationship, you can seal it every Sabbath right here with Him. You can seal that relationship every Sabbath with Him. So do we really understand what it means to enter into God's rest? Look at Exodus 16. Do we really understand Exodus 16? What it means to enter into God's rest. Exodus 16 verse 4. It says, Then the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a certain 
quota every day that I may test them whether they will walk in my law or not. He had brought them out of Egypt. Amen? And now he's giving them food every day. And there, Exodus 16, from verse 22 and onward, he tells them, every day, only worry about that day and gather for that day. The next day, more will come. But on the sixth day, what does he say? Don't gather. I'm, I'm sorry, gather twice because on the seventh day, there ain't going to be any. There isn't going to be any. And notice what, notice there, Exodus 16. Exodus 16, verse 26. Six days you shall gather it, but on the seventh day, which is the Sabbath, there will be none. Now it happened that some of the people went out on the seventh day to gather, but they found none. And the Lord said to Moses, How long do you refuse to keep my commandments and my laws? He was upset. God was upset there. He says, don't look for food out on the Sabbath. No physical bread on the Sabbath. Why not? It wasn't going to be there? Who is our physical bread? Our spiritual bread? It's God. On the Sabbath day, we focus on Him. On Him. Verse 29. See... For the Lord has given you the Sabbath. Therefore he gives you on the sixth day bread for two days. Let every man remain in, in his place. Let no man go out of his place on the seventh day. Don't go out looking to take care of yourself on the Sabbath day. Depend on God to take care of you. Don't go out looking to take care of yourself on the Sabbath. God will take care of you. God will take care of you. And to make sure that they understood this, Exodus 16 verse 35 says, And the children of Israel ate manna for how long? Forty years. Forty years. To make sure they understood that God says, You're going to keep the Sabbath forty years for sure. So friends, God is calling us to keep the Sabbath day holy. To rest physically and mentally. And some may say, but we don't know the Sabbath if it's been lost. We've already discussed that. But another way to answer that is, do we, still have, do we have Jews in the world today? What day do they worship on? Saturday. On Saturday. Where did the Jews get their calendar from? From God. <laughs> from God. They got it all the way back here. Since Exodus. Jesus was a Jew. They got it all the way back from the Old Testament, we can say, and the New Testament. So that goes to show that if we still have people that got their calendar from God, worshiping on Saturday, <laughs> what day is the seventh day? Is the Sabbath day? It's still Saturday. The Sabbath hasn't been lost. The Sabbath has not been lost or forgotten. We have, a, we have a group of people who got their calendar from God and worship on the seventh day, which is the same Saturday that you and I have. And the Sabbath is so special to God that He protected it. He protected it. Don't forget that even Jesus came from heaven and lived here on earth under the, uh, under the Julian calendar, which is very similar to the Gregorian calendar. There's hardly any changes, a couple of days. The same calendar that you and I have. And it was the seventh day that He worshiped and went to church. Even when he died, friends, he rested in the grave. Rested in the grave. So I, I want to appeal to you, if you turn to Isaiah, I want to appeal to you, if you turn to Isaiah 66. Isaiah 66. The Bible tells us that the Sabbath is going to be kept forever and ever and ever. Isaiah 66, verse 23. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another all flesh shall come to worship before me, says the Lord. All flesh shall come to worship. So my concern, friend, is for you. Have you entered that rest? Have you really entered that rest? 
You know, sometimes to enter that rest, we got to put our phones on silence or maybe even turn them off. To really enter the fullness of rest that God wants us to enjoy. Have we entered that rest? Jesus says here in Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, Come to me, all you who are labored and heavy bur laden or burdened, and I will give you rest. And he will give us rest. God offers that rest for us, friends. God offers that day for you. I agree with T.D. Jakes. I worship every day just like he do. But there's one day that God says, keep that day holy. And that's this day. This day. That's today. It's the same day that the Jews keep it holy. The calendar hasn't changed. God knows to keep it holy. So friends, I want to appeal to you as we sing our closing hymn, Take Time to Be Holy. As we sing our closing hymn, two simple appeals. Two simple appeals. As we're singing our closing hymn, we're going to be standing. So why don't we stand right now? Let's all stand. Okay? God wants us to rest. Amen? And we've seen for the past two weeks and the issues of the Sabbath. We've seen it from Scripture. But I want to I I have two appeals. And standing is easier to move around. Okay? What will you do, friends, with truth? What will you do, friends, with truth? Embrace it. Amen. I want to appeal if there is anyone here if there is anyone here who may have a question about the Sabbath. Maybe you're not convinced yet. Maybe there's some other verses that, what about this verse? You have any questions about the Sabbath and you would like to study it more, I appeal to you to come to the front while we're singing. All you got to do is say, excuse me, and they will gladly move out of your way. If they won't, you tell me. <laughs> Friends, the Sabbath, wait till August. Wait till August. And we're going to see that the Sabbath is a life and death situation. It is a life and death situation. We're going to study it deeply. But if you have any questions still, well, I don't understand it. I thought, what, what, what about this verse? Or, or what about that? I want to share with you what the Bible says. What the Bible says. Not so much what I say, what my church said. No, 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 no. What does the Word of God say? So while we're singing, I want to I get your name down, a contact, and I may visit with you so we can study the Sabbath together. The second appeal is, if there is somebody here who's heard enough about the Sabbath, he says, I know the Sabbath, I've seen it, I've seen enough, and I want to join a church that keeps the Sabbath day holy. I want to appeal to you to come to the front also, that I may get your name down. And we can visit to preparing so when you come and become a member of the Seventh-day Adventist Church.